Um, hi, good evening. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the GUI crew, uh, Hafiz and Ibnu for this uh, tonight's invitation to Tech Tarek. Okay, uh, so I'll just give a short introduction myself. Um, my name is Hakim. Um, I'm a design engineer. And actually, um, the th first thing is, uh, why did I actually embark on this project? Um, so actually what happened was, uh, one day I was actually you know on YouTube browsing around and I found a trailer of uh, James Cameron's recent expedition. It's called Deep Sea Challenger. So uh, after watching that trailer, I, w I got very interested and curious about how did a man or so-called how did someone actually privately, privately funded his own expedition. So he, he actually built his own uh, submersible and managed the expedition and you know, managed to actually see the deepest part of the ocean. And that got me thinking and I thought like, hey, if someone who's able to actually without um, with, with, with the determination and the curiosity to actually to really want to you know explore something, I think there's always a, if there's a will, there's a way. So after that particular trailer that I watched, I actually tried to find the, the actual documentary and I watched it, I was actually blown away. It's like, it's, it's, it's true what um, like uh, Hafiz has mentioned early on. The world's ocean is so vast, yet it's only 5% explored. And watching the documentary really blew my mind because I, I was telling myself if I could have something to actually, you know, give, me, give myself a glimpse of what's, in the, what's underneath the ocean. Because look at Singapore. We're an island and we are surrounded by so much water and I feel it's a waste that um, not much uh, explosion has been done. I mean, uh, for example, uh, Dr. Melin, she, she's, I think she's privileged because her job enables her to dive, you know, and explore, you know, see lots of different corals. And for myself, um, that's not my day job and I don't have the so-called um, the ability to dive because I don't have a diving license. But then I was telling myself, how can technology actually, you know, bridge that gap between someone who is really, really curious and someone who also wants to know what's really underneath, you know, at the bottom of the ocean. So, um, so I went around and then I found this particular so-called like, like, like a platform. It's called Open ROV. And actually, what Open ROV does is actually it it's made of many so-called uh, interested people who actually who who likes to build ROVs. So ROVs are actually remotely operated vehicles. But one thing about this group of people, they actually do it open source. There isn't. Um, there isn't like a, any uh, so-called uh, high cost to it because what they normally do is actually they they find off the shelf parts and they can discuss of discuss various ideas to build their own craft to actually to bring it underwater. So after lots of research and lots of um, you know uh, uh, finding, I kind of like told myself, you know what, it's time for me to build this ROV. So um, what I did was. Um, I kind of sourced the net and uh, found different design ideas, and I, I found that this open ROV, the one that's currently in front of you, yeah, it's, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those robust, uh, actually, robust designs which actually have been tried and tested before. So, what happened was, um, I thought of I could buy the kit from this particular, you know, online source and you know, start building. But then, what happened was uh, they said um, I emailed to them, you know, I made payment, and then they came back to me and said, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we can't sell the kit right now because we do not have all the parts. Then I was like, what? I feel like, you know, all, all psyched up, you know, like, you know, after reading, researching, you know, I was about to start my, you know, my so-called my underwater adventure. And they told me, oh, you got to wait for two months before the part comes. I said, what? Come on. Okay, then, because of, because of that, then it hit me. Because it hit me because I was telling myself, why must, why, must, why do I actually need that kit to build my own ROV? So that's when actually I, I read furthermore. I mean, I read out and I discovered that actually, you can actually build everything from scratch because the instructions are all out there. You just have to, you know, f read, read, read slowly and find out how they, how, how to piece all the different parts together. So I kind of discovered that actually in Singapore, we have many different so-called workshops that does different kind of fabrication, and all you need is just so-called the, the right uh, know-how, the right parts, and, you know, and and and, 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 and it all started as a, as an adventure. So what happened was uh, throughout one whole month, I kind of like go online, uh, design certain parts, uh, get it fabricated in Singapore. So there's this uh, particular so-called like a fabrication shop in uh, MOQ Industrial Estate, what they did was they do a lot of laser cutting. So actually, uh, the most of the parts over here actually all are made of acrylic and an aluminum sheet, which were actually laser cut in different uh, sorts of sizes. And all the electronics were actually uh, found or bought online because uh, in the nutshell, this uh, ROV consists of a very simple system. It has three thrusters, two of which are actually horizontal thrusters and one is a vertical thruster and uh, it's encased in a clear acrylic tube whereby you have the um, microcontrollers 
So microcontrollers are actually just a uh, circuit boards or actually electronics that helps to you know communicate between the different parts of the ROV and also the user. And and the final thing which actually makes make the connection of the bridge is actually the ability to view what's underneath. So what I did was I actually kind of hacked a off the shelf USB camera and, and kind of uh, plug it or connect it to the microcontroller board and actually it enables um, anyone to actually to, see, to view what's underneath or beneath the ocean. So um, long story short, uh, it took me about say a couple of weekends before I got all the parts together and I decided to assemble it. And once I got a, once I assembled the ROV, I was very excited because you know finally I've got something which I can actually use and you know go exploration. So lo and behold, I went to a friend's house. He has a pool in his condominium, and I tried. And after I realized that. Um, my ROV was actually negatively buoyant. <laughs> so what happens means is uh, I've forgotten because uh, the actual uh, blue plants or the actual plants uh, required the outer shell to be made of um, a type of plastic. Apparently in Singapore they don't have the plastic and I substituted with aluminum. Uh, aluminum. So that actually made the, the thing a bit more heavier than, than, than normal. So when I put it, it's just, uh, I mean I put it, it sank. Then uh, I thought, okay, that's normal because I'm just seeing that I could actually you know, let it explode. Then when I, I I kind of raise it up, it did go up. But then I when I stop it, then I said, why did it even sink sink below? Then I realized it was actually negatively buoyant. So okay, long story short, uh, I had to actually do a bit of trimming. Also, called what, it, what I did was I put a couple of styrofoam to actually to make it now it's neutrally buoyant. So what happens now is like uh, regardless of its depth, the ROV will actually maintains its depth. So the next thing was uh, after the testing in the swimming pool, uh, my next test was uh, I brought it to Bedok Reservoir because I live in the east and I thought, you know what, Bedok Reservoir could be a interesting a starting point, you know, where I can actually you know discover, or you know, I was hoping to see something underneath, you know, in in the reservoir because okay, you know what, let's let's let's, let's go ahead, yeah. So I went there on a Sunday afternoon, you know, all all hot and sunny, and I put it down, and it descended. Okay, it was it was fine. It was you know neutral, but yeah, I I it kind of. Um, Worked that's what I expected to do. But then what I didn't expect was actually it turned out to be that reservoir doesn't have any sea sea life at, at the bottom of the ocean. We're just <laughs> full of algae and you just see lots of algae with brackish water. Okay, so you know what? And and I mean, yeah, it was an interesting thing because uh, you know, who knew that actually uh, I mean I, I was expecting some like fresh water, you know, like you know, in my imagination, some kind of like you know, fishes or you know, I don't know what tadpoles or what, but then apparently that was all fantasy. So yeah, so long story short, so that was my adventure for this uh, our, uh, little, I mean my open ROV. So uh, perhaps I'll end off my sharing session with a short demonstration of sorts, yeah. Okay, um, unfortunately I can't connect the um, lightning cable because it's actually a bit bulky, so actually it will actually obstruct the USB cable, but I'll we'll just show the screen of the monitor. So maybe perhaps after this sharing session, you guys can just take a look over here. So actually, um, what you're seeing right now is actually actual footage of um, what's uh, beaming, streaming through the webcam. But however, I think uh, while it was hibernating, it shut off by itself, so I'm trying to restart it anyway. So actually, um, there are very really basic controls for this uh, ROV system. So what you can do, actually, you can actually uh, adjust the angle or the pitch of the camera. So that actually, you know, when you are descending or surfacing, the angle can, I mean, the camera angle can actually be elevated up or downwards. And at the same time, it's because it's a very basic uh, design. So um, the movement of this ROV is very simple. It just uh, goes up and down. It struts, uh, it goes forward and backward, and it turns anti-clockwise or clockwise. So and mm, it's a very basic uh, so-called setup. And uh, the last thing is actually it has lights, uh, uh, on-board lights, because uh, as you descend deeper, it gets darker. So uh, lights can be controlled to give uh, visibility for the darker spaces. Yeah. So I guess um, at the moment it was it takes some time to start up, but perhaps mid after the entire session you guys can just come and have a go with it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.